first step, even though it sounds very simple, is balance and fader. That should be this speaker, and it is. That's my rear. That's Fernando's rear. That's Fernando's front. Conveniently, this has a reset. Takes it right back to the middle. Make sure that your bass and treble, you should have already checked this to make sure that this is flat. Don't do the auto EQ if this is anything other than set to zero across the board. Next is polarity pops. So we have red. This tweeter should be the opposite. It is. It's because of the crossover points on them. The rear should also be red. On the other side, We want to see red on the bottom and green on the top. We have red. And we have green. Now if you're asking why the bottoms are red and the top is green, that's the crossover that they're using. I'm sure Focal found some kind of, where the two crossover points was, some kind of an issue. By flipping the tweeter, it would solve that issue. Now as far as why they're all red, it's actually green coming out of the amplifier and red at the plug. Ford probably did that for the Bluetooth system. Sometimes what happens is they'll flip the mid-range 180 degrees with the output to cancel noise from the Bluetooth system in the car. Perfectly normal. We're going Golden here, we finished our preliminary balance fader polarity check and basic setup on the DSP. Now it's time to drop in the RTA mic and do the rest of it. For the subwoofer, we're going with the Kicker Comp RT 12 inch down fired enclosure. This box comes from Kicker with a Comp RT 12 and a passive radiator. One of the nice things about this is because it is down firing, you can still stack all your stuff you want onto it. Also, it will fit into the cubby up underneath here if he wants to just totally make it disappear. This has this big area here that it'll slide right into. Just like that. Tuning software is set up. This is what's coming out of the car, flat, preset one. This is the microphone and what it sees. And this is what I was talking about. This is that factory bump that they put in there, but over here, non-existent. This is a nice V-curve that pretty much all of you guys would like. There's a few spots like that's kind of peaky, we'll, we'll fix that and whatever is going on here. We'll, we'll correct some of the, the basic stuff. Plus this is just the overall sound of the car. If we go to preset two, we come back over here. Here again, it's not terrible. But let's A, B between the two. We'll look at preset one. And on the DMRTA, we can store a view. And then we'll switch to preset two. And we'll store two. Say yes, mute, front. And now recall, so here's one, here's two. Better yet, we'll leave two on, yes. We'll come back over here and we'll play. Here's one. If I turn one down a little so you can see, two is the ghosted image in the back. That's what they corrected. And this is one, no EQ curve, whatever. It's not like there's a right or wrong answer here. It's just people often ask, you know, how important is it to have an RTA to tune in a car? And it's very important, very important indeed. Both of those would probably work and you get in the car and be like, oh, that sounds pretty good. Having the RTA gives us the ability to actually see see that. I'm going to go back to one which was flat and make my own personal adjustments to it. I like the way one looks. It's just going to need a little bit of tweaking. Plus, I don't know what it looks like as just channel one, channel two. We will be spending some time on this. This will get interesting. Obviously, some time has elapsed. We're done with the tune. That means Fernando's in the car doing the final test listen. What I like to do is I get it here. I hop in and out to where I like it and then I bring him in because, you know, my ears may be a little fatigued and let him decide if he likes the way it sounds. You know, is what I'm listening for. At this point, we let the engine run because we're done doing the microphone part of it. Are you playing? You know, I know a lot of people you might ask, hey, hey it's just one down firing 12. Is that enough bass? Fernando, 
That's plenty of bass. It's a decent amount of bass. Mm -hmm. I mean, it mm -hmm. it gets down and boogies. I think we'll we'll have to play something with bass. Yeah. Why don't you drop some bass? Just we can do a couple Just notes. And that's with it underneath the panel. Mm -hmm. I think we can leave it there safely and not have any problems. So he'll be happy about that. Yes. As far as the mids and highs go, everything sounds wonderful. The one thing about this speaker, this is off axis and it's low. It's very, it's, it's down low. The mid bass is down even lower. Pushing the sound up onto the dash can be a struggle in these. There's no doubt about it. In this case, it's not a full active system. It's passive. So we don't have the control that we would have with an active system to really separate the tweeter from the mid-range. What we ended up doing is using the distance for the tweeters instead of the distance for the mid-bass. That made all the difference in the world. There's a couple inches there, like the ratio was different is really what it comes down to. That ratio took the center imaging from down here in the dash and moved it up here where it needed to be. Typically you don't do that in a set like this. We always reserve that as like the secret weapon. When it works, it works. In this case, it worked. Mike, I'm out of here. That's right. <laughs> it gets nice and loud and it sounds fabulous. I'm happy. Are mm -hmm. you happy? Yes, I'm happy. Hopefully the customer will be happy too. All right, let's go over the checklist. Did we, we showed you the bass knob. Check. We let you hear the woofer. Check. We talked about a whole bunch of stuff. Check. Showed you the amplifier. Check. I think that's it. Check. End the show. Check. On to the next one, guys. You guys have a great night. As always, we hope you enjoyed this. I did that backwards. Either way, we'll see you later next time. Check. Bye. Bye.